gonna touch base a little bit more so on the trailer setups and we may add some videos and pictures of yours versus mine versus um, some of the options out there. Yeah, plan um, of attack for your area too. Plan right? of attack yeah. for the area, yeah, definitely. Um, so I, uh, I have been in the drone industry for three, three and a half years now. Basically uh, when, the, when the T30 came out is when you know, my spray drone career started. Um, first year I built a completely enclosed trailer. I did all of my mixing inside. I had all my clean water inside. I had my generators inside with doors that could open. So I had a lot of ventilation, a lot of air. Um, and I really, really liked it, but I had to operate from the ground. So that changed where I had to set up, how I had to set up every time. Um, and as far as setup, pulling into a field or pulling up to a field, I told us, or I, I talked about it earlier. A lot of times I operate from the side of a gravel road. Well, in that instance, kind of the first thing that I look for is the highest point because I'm relatively flat where I'm at, but there's still a general roll. Um, I like to get to the highest highest point, highest point of attack, because then I know, you know, vehicles coming from each way can see me on that point. Also, my visual line of sight is best if I'm at the highest point. Second thing I obviously look for, I've got overhead uh, power lines, telephone lines, I want to make sure that, you know, from my home point where I'm taking the drone off, I have safe, clear air, you know, 20 or 30 feet around me up to 40 feet so that I can get into my boundary, into my mission zone safely. Yeah. Those are the two biggest things that I think I look for in, you know, setting up next to a field. I think we look for most of the same. I think a few differences, like we talked about for us, terrain is so different. So a lot of times early season, we work Christmas tree fields. Christmas tree fields are rode out into blocks. So you have big blocks with certain station points. So when we go out there, we're finding flat station points that we can work from, but also the safest point, because if we have something happen with the drone, we need multiple spots throughout the field for emergency landing areas, um, because we can't land the drone in the trees. Right. You know, it's, it's not really an option for us, and, and the trees are so hard, it's, it's a guarantee it's going to be a bad day, especially <laughs> on that terrain with the drone going down. So yeah. having multiple emergency landing spots, having flat terrain, like we talked about, one of the first times we took our trailer out, um, it had a metal roof on it. And because it was on a slight slope, uh, you know, it, it basically slid right off. But the caveat to that is if you put a little barrier on the side of your trailer, you create a big tripping hazard for all of your employees where there's a lot of time where we walk up to the edge and if they do hit that that corner piece of metal that's coming up and they trip over that they're falling off the trailer mm -hmm. and it's not really to the benefit of the drone so we solve that by putting down a uh, gym pads so the rubber gym, mat something yeah the rubber mats and they actually they absorb the liquid so that it just doesn't pool all day uh on the top of the trailer but also gives that cushion for when the drone comes in whether it's cold whether it's hot whether it's you know a little bit rainy whether it's you know there's dew on it um, we have consistent landings every time and what we did on top of that is take some spray paint So and we spray painted a long line across so that we know every time you're coming in you match the crosshairs To where the paint is mm -hmm. so you can guarantee a safe landing every single time uh, yep. Where you're gonna fly and even when we run off the ground next to the trailer having a trailer That's built to where you can run off the side of it when you want to or run off the top because no one wants to sit there and put batteries over your head all day trying to get uh batteries up just to get the drone going again yeah i think one of the, and you just said it having a trailer that is modular yeah. that you can run in different scenarios whether it be off the side or if you have to run off the back because you're on a gravel road and there's no field access or for the the visual line of sight region if you have the second deck so that you can plumb and run electricity up to that second deck and have everything up top um one thing that I learned about with trailers over the two or three years that I've been in this, um, I've done it two or three different ways now building trailers because you run it for a year and you think, oh, this would be way more efficient or way better if we do it this way. Um, and making it so you can make those adjustments and make those changes. Um, and everybody likes something a little different the way it seems. There's not one trailer that fits every purpose. Well, yeah, for us, I mean, a big thing was the transfer pump. So moving it down the gas line, down all the way uh, from the cone tank at the back of the trailer to the reel up front, having a transfer pump that could move it down that was made to take chemicals, but also having a switch. You know, one of the biggest things is- Close by where you're working. Exactly. Turn it because, on, turn it off. Because then it's just guys running back and forth. Yep. So having a hardwired switch um, with a foot pedal that we could use to where it goes to the foot pedal, then it goes out to a switch that the guy who's filling up the drone has in his hand, 
hits the switch, starts flooding with product, turn the switch off, automatically stops that flow of chemical to the drone, which is really important because then you have a double safety system. You mm -hmm. can hit that transfer switch and, it, and you can let go of the gas nozzle. And, and we're seeing too, guys are getting more innovative to where they're putting different nozzles on top to fill the drone to where it can be a magnetic system so they can walk away. Um, I've and, seen the, the banjo cam lock couplers on some. Exactly. So those are really good tools to increase the effectiveness of your operation, the efficiency of your operation, but also keep you safe. The more we can keep guys away, you know, if someone's changing the battery and, and the chemical's filling, but they don't have to be right next to it, but they have the switch in their hand to turn it off on mm -hmm. a, a second's notice, it's the safest, easiest operation. And, you know, we talked about in closed trailers, ventilation's great. We need, if, if we're going to the top of Virginia really far, we got to have an enclosed trailer just for the safety of getting up there. Um, That's another know, great thing. Driving the drone, I, I want it safe to where it's not exposed to the rain or, or different conditions that we can see driving across state lines or up through states. And keeping your your equipment and your chemicals secured as well, being able to lock them up overnight, theft, yep. you know, things like that. That's where uh, an enclosed trailer or an enclosed portion of your trailer really shines or is really nice. Or even if even if it's a, a large toolbox area in the front of the trailer that you can throw chemical in throw some of your mixing stuff, your PPE, all of your stuff in and lock it up and have that secured. Um, and then a spot or spots to throw your drones in and have them locked up. Um, kind of whatever works best for every situation. And there's a lot to put on a trailer, right? Oh, I mean, for from, sure. from your batteries for the drone, all of the cooling stations, every everything you need for that, all the way up to the tanks, the piping, the plumbing, the electrical, your generator, your generators, no matter what, your generator and drone are probably gonna be one of the the two things that you can't change the size of you can right. get smaller cone tanks you can get smaller water tanks you can't get smaller drones to fit or smaller generators because we need that that power to run throughout the whole day so uh on your trailer setup brandon how many how many gallons of clean water or mixing water do you have so we have 275 on a daily basis with the option to add a second tank to get up to 500, just yep. around there. Yep. Um, and we also have a small, we went to Harbor Freight, one of the local stores, got a 30 gallon small IBC tank. Yep. Um, and we set it right there, we fill that with water and that's our clean water. Yep. So we, you know, because you don't want to take 30 gallons away from your operation right. for the day. So I guess we could always use that as a spare water if we wanted a few more acres to, to finish off, but that's the reserve for clean water. You need to wash your hands. You need to do any of this mm -hmm. stuff. Go to the clean water tank, take the use of that. Um, and also, you know, we have a removable eyewash station. So mm -hmm. it only has so much eyewash solution. If there was a really bad accident right after that, they need to still be able to wash their eyes out and have mm -hmm. access to water. So not only for safety, but for operation, we've tried to incorporate all of that with our, and we have one cone loading tank, but we've seen one of our trailers, we need a hundred gallon cone loading tank because we're just out there, we're spraying high gallons per acre, we're going through product fast, where if so you're you doing can a batch fungicide, up enough that yeah, you're... if you're doing fungicide or something, spraying one to two gallons per acre, you can really get away with a, a 30 to 50 gallon mm -hmm. cone, cone loading tank. Yep. So uh, whatever works for your operation, but it's definitely something you need to consider. And for us, having the ability to take everything off of our trailer really fast is super important because on windy days, we do all of our granular products. Even through the summer, we're still fertilizing. So being able to swap these things on and off without having to drill through the hard deck mm -hmm. all the time is super, super important or else we're gonna have to go back every two to three seasons and replace all the boards on all the trailers because we've drilled through it so many times trying to get stuff on, on and off. Yep, and what, I mean, part of the reason I asked, you know, what do you carry for water? What do you carry for clean water or mixing water? Um, in my scenario or my, you know, in Midwest Iowa, I wanted a thousand gallons of clean water or mixing water because I knew I was good for the day. If I could do a 500 acre day with two drones, um, I wanted to be able to go out, not have to come back, not have to refill. So uh, how much clean water, how much mixable mixing water you have is going to be a little bit circumstantial to what you can get done in a day. Oh, we talked about plan of attack, right? Yep. You need to know when you're setting up your business and stuff, how much acreage can you cover in a day? And that's one of the crazy things from pricing to every, all the metrics of your business, how much can you accomplish in a day? I'm going out typically on a pasture day where 
that's some of the best land we get and it's still <laughs> very terrain um we're usually getting around 12 to 13 acres an hour right and so throughout a full day we're usually getting between 80 and 100 acres at at five gallons per acre right uh, what are you so there'd be there'd be no reason for you to have a thousand gallons of water never or need it because we can't even why attack carry it that around, much land you know yeah. so for me um if i have a good going day and say it's me a vo and one and one t40 um i can easily hit 270 to, to 300 acres yeah um so in that instance you know 600 gallons for me because 99 percent of what i do is two gallons per acre yeah. with a, a fungicide and insecticide and some kind of um, water conditioning anti-drift agent um, so yeah build a trailer to suit your needs and yeah. obviously be able to change it up but you know if i was going to go out like you and only do 100 or 150 acres in a day why have a thousand or 1200 gallons of water build the trailer that fits your needs well yeah most of my guys probably couldn't even contact or contract your crews or vice versa because I can't get the amount of acreage you need done in a day right. and you can't even get into the field that I need to work right. on because you know we're working on these higher steeper areas we even have in the back of the, the truck setups for very hard to reach terrains but that doesn't work for corn unless you have an extensive water source mm -hmm. um, for the rest of that day yep so yeah making making the right trailer that fits your needs and and really looking at your business plan and what you want to accomplish in that first year it's going to be super important and pivotal to your business and, and the success of it. Yep. And there's there's a, a vast array of different trailers um, price-wise that guys can build too. And for not a whole lot of money, if you're just getting into this industry, you can get something that will um, that will make you money and yeah. be able to do acres. I mean, IBC totes, you use IBC totes for clean water. I used to mix into a, an IBC tote that I triple rinsed and made sure it was clean out. That was my, my hot load tank when I was starting out. Um, stuff like that. I guarantee if you uh, buddy up with a couple growers, you can get those for little to nothing. Yeah, no, exactly. You don't have to go out to any of these places and spend thousands of dollars on tanks and thousands of dollars on pumps. Um, you want to have quality stuff. You want to be safe. You want to be secure, but also... Yeah, good, good pump to load the chemical or the water from the IBC tote into the cone mixing tank. Good transfer pumps, um, chemical pumps. You really want to spend the money there, but do you need an auto mixer your right. first season unless that's how you're building your business you, you really don't because right. with just a little bit more time you can save that money up front and go and just batch load triple rinse um, clean the products and, and go ahead with your next product mm -hmm. pretty simple <laughs>